on, on the Japan visit tomorrow, um, the president has said to U.S. steel workers, I have your back, I need it. Um, what, what is his message to the Prime Minister tomorrow about the potential acquisition of U.S. steel? How strongly uh, will the President convey his opposition? And will there be any specific things that the President will either urge the Prime Minister to do or will say steps that he's willing to take to prevent, uh, prevent an acquisition? You guys all know Joe Biden. You've seen Joe Biden. He's been very clear that he's going to stand up for American workers. He's going to defend their interests. He's also been very clear that he is going to make sure that the U.S.-Japan alliance is the strongest it's ever been. He's going to accomplish both of those things. That's what he has set out to do as president. That's what he'll continue to do. And I'm, I won't comment further on the, uh, the specifics of diplomatic conversations between the two leaders. Yeah. Jay, can you give us a better understanding? What is the U.S.'s assessment of the troop withdrawal we've seen by the Israelis recently? from Gaza? Is this in response to pressure from the United States? Was there any commitment made to the U.S. there? Is this a way of trying to advance negotiations with Hamas? And do you view this as a change in the way Israel is prosecuting its war there? You'll have to speak with the Israelis about the purpose or motive behind their particular operational moves. I'm not going to characterize that from the podium. What so I will say— There has been no private commitment <laughs> made to you that we will remove troops based on the conversation you had or after months of pressure I'm, to help— I, As you might expect, I'm also not going to get into private diplomatic conversations between the president and the prime minister. But what I will say is that a reduction in the intensity and scope of military operations does create a greater opening for the movement of humanitarian goods around Gaza at a critical moment uh, when there is a real humanitarian crisis there. So we welcome the opportunity to move more trucks in and then move more trucks around Gaza so that the innocent people, uh, uh, innocent civilians there can get the food, water, medicine, and other essentials that they need for you, their. You also welcome Erez and Ashdod, the announcement that was made by the prime minister or by the Israelis last week. Neither of them have opened now uh, approaching a week since then, are you satisfied with this timetable? We were told that the U.S., from your colleague John Kirby, needed to see action within hours or days. It's now days, but certainly well beyond hours. Are you satisfied by the pace of this, and what commitments has the U.S. been made about how soon that will occur? Well, just to take the, the opening uh, point of your question, which is that we welcome these steps, what we actually said very clearly from the first minute was um, Israel has made public statements. Now we need to see them follow through with action, and that action needs to be specific, concrete, and measurable. And that goes for the opening of a crossing into uh, northern Gaza from Israel. It goes for the opening of Ashdod port. Um, when it comes to those two things, we will watch to see what unfolds over the next few days. What John Kirby was talking about in terms of hours was a step change in the willingness of the Israeli government to take action to get more aid into Gaza. And if you look at the last two days, there has been a substantial increase in the amount of aid going into Gaza. That's good. It is not good enough. We would like to see more action following through on what the prime minister has announced publicly, and we'd like to see that over the course of the next few days.